Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up the Primaris Captain from the Indominus box set. I'm doing a second shot at doing Blood Angels to try and see if I can get the armor right this time. This model from the Indominus box set is more of a snap together kind of model. It has less uh, freedom when building it, so the head has to be a part of it. So when it came to building, the pre-made base was attached to the base. His right and left arms are are not attached to the body. His head is attached to the body. His backpack is separate. His coat of arms is separate, and his shield that has his hand is separate. And I primed them all with Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer. All right, for the pre-shading, we're gonna go with Eschen Gray, Pallid Witch Flesh, and White Scar White, and I don't have it here shown, but Lamian Medium. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Eschen Gray and with an airbrush, apply that for, to the underside. And then with Pallid Witch Flesh, we're gonna apply this to, uh, from above to create the light to shadows. Then we're going to do like two coats of dry brushing all over the model with a tiny uh, dry brush. And then I'm going to take what's left of my white paint that I have on my palette, Mix it with some Lamy Medium to help it flow better and paint straight lines on the edges of his armor plates and such. And now with Lamian Medium and Mephiston Red, we're going to make a wash and we're going to apply to all the armor. This time I'm only going to do one coat. Uh, and basically it's two parts Lamian to one part Mephiston with a drop of water added in. Alright, then I decided to do an oil wash now. So with cadmium red mixed with burnt sienna to create a deep red, somewhat brownish wash. Uh, then I apply this all over. So I basically do the usual apply, wipe, apply. However, it was a little thin so I had to apply <laughs> two or three more coats because uh, I added too much mineral spirits in. But then at the very end, it just wasn't enough. The color wasn't dark enough, not strong enough. And so I decided to go and I took Burnt Umber, this very dark one, and mix it in with the red. And then I applied that all over. And then, I didn't show it, but I did a small wipe and then applied a second.
Alright, moving on to the base with Dawnstone, Administrative Grey, Burnt Umber, and French Ultramarine, we're going to paint up the base. So first we're going to apply Dawnstone all over the base, and then we're going to dry brush the entire base with Administrative Grey. Then we're going to make an oil wash of Burnt Umber and we're going to apply it all over the base. And we're going to apply a second coat of it to the dirt that's around it. And once that dries, usually with the help of a hair dryer, we're going to take a thin wash of French Ultramarine and apply it all to the stones to, add, to make it bluish. Alright, now with Lamin Medium, Eschen Grey, Lamp Black, Dawnstone, and Administrative Grey, we're going to paint the cloth he has as well as his uh, Imperial Eagle on his chest. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a wash of Eschen Grey with Lamian Medium, mix with a little bit of water, and we're going to apply this all over the capes and his crest. We're going to have to do like two coats or so because I got a little bit of red on it and make sure it doesn't pull too deeply onto the cape. Then we're going to do a thin wash of Lamp Black, this oil wash over the crest and the uh, and his tabard cloth thingy. And once that is done without pulling, we now have a pretty good line of sight guideline of how to paint the model. So then we're going to go with Dawnstone and we're going to apply this and paint straight lines on the most raised areas of the uh, edges of the cloaks and stuff as well as on the edges of his Imperial Eagle on his chest. Then we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Dawnstone and Administrative Grey and do a thinner line of these lines on the, uh, well, on the cloth. And uh, we're going to do basically a little bit of overbrushing. It's like dry brushing, but it's overbrushing. It's not a completely dried off brush and to be able to hit all the raised wing little pieces on this crest. Then we're going to do pure Administrative Grey on the most raised areas, thin lines on the cloth, as well as on the most far out edges of his uh, Imperial Eagle symbol on his chest. Now with Ulthuan Grey and Pallid Witch Flesh, all we're going to do is basically just paint the shield with Ulthuan Grey because it's very good for covering up colors, and then we're just going to fill it in with Pallid Witch Flesh to make it a white shield. Alright, now with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and XV88, we're going to paint the leather. His leather belt and his uh, leather gun holster. So we're going to paint it all with Mornfang Brown first. Then we're going to apply a layer of Agrax Earthshade all over to darken the leather. Then we're going to go back with Mornfang Brown and we're going to paint, uh, for the leather belt, we're essentially going to paint like 25% of it, like the edges, a bit thickly, as well as the edges of the gun holster and I'm going to paint thin lines in between. We're going to even do that on the belt, on the part that is in the front, uh, create some thin lines. Basically like, imagine making figure eights on the belt, the part that hangs out in front. And then we're going to do a mix of Mornfang Brown and XV88 and we're going to paint the very edges of the gun holster and the belt and stuff and we're going to continue to paint our figure eight on the front part of the belt as well as fill in some more of the lines on the gun holster. And then we're going to do pure XV88 on the most raised uh, corners and edges are uh, just a thin line on the most raised areas most prominent stuff with using water with this is going to create very strong uh, contrasting straight lines and it's going to stick out well Now with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Wild Rider Red, we're going to paint the wax seals for the purity seals. So we're going to paint them all in Corn Red. Then with Mephiston Red, we're going to paint the center and the rings around, basically painting 90% of it. And then with Wild Rider Red, we're going to paint like an upper crescent of the, of the seals, like an upper crescent and a dot in the center. Alright, with Steel Legion Drab, Agrax Earthshade, Baneblade Brown, Rackarth Flesh, and Thondia Brown, we're going to paint the Purity Seal papers. So what we're going to do is going to paint them all with Steel Legion Drab. Then we're going to paint them with Agrax Earthshade. We don't want that a massive amount of pooling, but we just want a little bit of pooling 
into the recesses. Then once that dries, usually with the help of a hair dryer, we're going to go with Steel Legion Drab and we're going to paint pretty much 80 to 90 percent of the purity seals. The edges, uh, raised parts of the center, raised parts of the fold, and such and such. Then I'm going to take Bane Blade Brown. We're going to paint uh, the edges again, but a little bit less, and basically like maybe like 50 to 60 percent of it. Uh, thinner lines, the most raised areas, folds and such. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Ragharth Flesh. But on some of the thicker purity seals, we're going to paint like L's on the sides because the paper like breaks up. You basically paint one line on one side and then on the bottom part of the break, you paint an L basically. And I'm painting the edges, the most raised areas with the thinnest lines and our best thin brush. And then once that's done, we're going to take Thalmdia Brown Water down a bit and our thinnest brush. And basically, we're going to do tap, tap, tap dots in a straight line or trying to follow the curve of the paper and create the purity seals. In some places it's not going to be very visible because of the brownness. I probably maybe should have done like a Corvus black or Abaddon black so the letters would be visible on all things but like some of the dark spots of the purity seal they're not that visible but in some areas they are. So maybe I should have done black with this one. Alright, with the Ushtabi Bone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Lamian Medium, and Screaming Skull, we're going to paint the dead Space Marine that's, up, that's glued to the front of his shield. You can even see the uh, ports that go into his black carapace. So basically we're painting the whole thing with Ushabti Ushab Bone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do a mix of one to one of Skeleton Horde Contrast and Lamian Medium. And I apply around two coats of this because it was just a bit too thin. The amount of coats really varies with these kind of washes to one to two depending on how, like how concentrated it is it's a mix a fresh mix every time so i can't give the best most accurate amounts and then once that's done we're gonna go back with ushtabi bone we're gonna highlight everything and then we're gonna go with screaming skull and do a fine highlight with straight lines on the most raised areas on the skulls rib cages bones and all that Alright, with Cadian Flesh on Lamian Medium, Agrax Earthshade, and Pallid Witch Flesh, I actually do not use the Pallid Witch Flesh. I paint the skin on the guy's face. So basically, with all the pre-shading and the details done, I try to do very thin coats, and because the way the model is, I can't really easily brush it, because there's a, like a little piece of his armor blocking his mouth and nose. And so I'm going to rely on washes to try to build up coats to easily handle it. So here's what I do. So I make Kedi uh, wash of Cadian flesh tone and Lamian medium, basically two parts Lamian to one part Cadian and a drop of water, and then I apply this to his skin. But it's very thin, so I dry it out with a hair dryer, and then I apply a second coat. Then it looks kind of good as a start. You can still see some of the gray underneath, but that's fine. Then we're going to go with Agrax Earthshade and do a one-to-one -one mix of that and Lamian medium with a little bit of water, and then I'm going to apply this over his face, and it's going to get into the recesses. And so basically what I do is after applying this, I apply another layer of Cadian Flesh Tone, but like on his most raised areas, his nose, top of his head, his cheekbones, like the biggest, most prominent areas of his face that I can easily reach. Then I do another layer of Agrax Earthshade, and then I do another layer of Cadian Flesh on his most important, most raised areas. And basically the result is with these thin washes, I create something where there is some shading, there is some highlighting. I maybe do another layer of Agrax Earthshade, I can't recall, and then a very fine layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. My last layer of Cadian Flesh Tone was made with a very fine brush, doing little tap tap taps around his forehead, his nose, his eyebrows, his high cheekbones and stuff, because the tiny little taps put little drops that kind of flow together easily well to make a very fine line. And uh, the face looks okay. And now we are done with non-metal, so with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I apply this all over the model. Alright, with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, Runefang Air Steel, and Transparent Burnt Sienna, I mix, like, 
three or two or three uh Call it. It's a little too much, but like two or three uh, brush strokes worth of Runefang steel with like three or four drops of gloss varnish and like two drops of Liquitex ink. The more gloss varnish ensures that it'll be shiny. And then with like a drop of water, I then apply this over all the brass metals. Alright, so sometimes the metallics don't work as well as I would like, I don't know, it's like a bit finicky, so I'm going to have to like up their ability. I'm not going to apply an oil wash, so I'm going to do this with Liberator Gold and Runefang Steel, which are kind of close to the color. I'm going to apply Liberator Gold in some areas to highlight, basically the most raised areas and edges. And then I'm going to do a mix of one to one of Liberator Gold and Runefang Steel Air, which was a mistake I should have done one part Liberator to two parts Runefang Steel and do the final highlights on the most raised areas or edges. And then, of course, I think I apply a dot to his uh, studs. A gold one to a stud to apply 100 years, and then a silver stud to apply like 1 to 50 years on him because he has two studs. Alright, I'm going to try out more of this uh, Vallejo of things. Gunmetal Gray and Dura Aluminum, which is basically a metal and a very bright metal. So with the regular metal, I'm going to paint all the metal pieces including the back of the shield, the handle, handle of the sword, um, uh, his several silver or iron metallics on his head and uh, his gun case. And then with Dura Lunum, I'm basically just going to highlight everything and paint it, of course, his sword with it. Alright, with Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamian Medium, and sort of a two parts Lamian to one part Drakenhof, I basically apply this onto his sword. So I apply one coat all over, and then uh, it's the best thing to do is to do this one side and then move on to the next side. So basically, I paint uh, partially all the way up uh, one half of the sword and then partially all the way down the other half. And then I let it dry with a little bit of help from a hairdryer, and then I apply another coat that's a little further along all the way up and then a little further along all the way down dry and then apply another one and basically goes from silver to dark blue and then once that's completely done on one side then it is best to flip it over and do the same process on the other side and uh, one thing i didn't show is i also then uh well i retook the dura aluminum and i highlighted the edges of the sword and the center of the sword painted a straight line a little difficult to do but what i didn't show is that i also took some liquitex gloss varnish and applied it on the sword to make it shine better Alright, with this Vallejo metal, this is exhaust manifold, basically this is a black metal, and then I'm just going to apply it onto the joints in his armor. I just wanted to try it. Alright. The adventures of freehanding continue with Wa flesh, Corvus black, and Pelagwitch flesh. We're gonna paint his, uh, what is it? His shield thingy. All right, so basically I make this up as I go, so I have no idea what design I'm doing. So I basically paint some green, then I paint some white in the center, and I got the three colors there along with the red. And then I, I have the piece attached with some sticky tack to a brush to better hold it. And then I basically try to do my best to paint squares on it on the bottom half of the thing. I don't want to paint too many because I don't want more chances to mess up. And it turns out okay. It took a while and a lot of very fine tuning. And then with some decal fix that's old enough to go to middle school, or maybe high school, I then apply it to the shield at first, and then I apply a transfer on that actually is kind of hidden by the design that I painted on there, a campaign badge for the Indominus uh, thing. And then I apply some decal fix on top, and then I seal it in with varnish, but what I don't show is that it just looks bad, the decal fix wasn't that good, and so I applied a coat of Liquitex gloss varnish to create a shine that will hide all the flaws in the decal fix and such. 
and I also uh, did one off camera of him, his left shoulder pad applying the blood angel symbol. All right, and then I fully assemble the entire thing and edge the base with some nice Mornfang brown. And seven out of 10, I hate it. I screwed up again. The armor sucks. I I don't know what it is. Like I got it when I painted those black Templars, the one of some of the most recent ones, I somehow magically got it right, and I can't seem to replicate the the stark highlights that were in the armor. Although the, it's it's uh, subtle on this model, it's just not as good. I I think maybe what I had to do to get it right is well, of course, in the Black Templar models, the dark black is contrasted by white, and red is not contrasted by white, but it does shine through a little bit. What I'm thinking is maybe I needed to dilute the Mephiston red even further, or apply less so that the wash is thinner, and then apply a second wash of the Mephiston red Lamy medium coat that's diluted very further with water, and then a very strong heavily pigmented oil wash to then wipe away uh, with clearly with some burnt umber in there. So what I'm thinking is the paint had to be reduced in its pigment and the oil wash needs to be thicker and I think that would be able to replicate what I've been trying to replicate. But eh, I'm tired of doing blood angels. Well technically I haven't done it right the first time and I don't want to saturate too many of nearly identical kits with it. Alright, well, that's a theory for another time, but as far as this model goes, it's basically like the armor was a dud, which was what I was trying to do, but the rest is fine. The metals are fine, the... well, somewhat fine. The cape is fine, uh, chest piece is fine, skin is pretty fine. Oh, I forgot to mention that he has a cut and scar right there. I actually took a thin line of corn red and applied it into it. I forgot to mention that. Uh, his purity seals are fine, the paper's fine, the skull, or the bones are fine. His sword is fine, the base is great, I really like the blue and brown oil wash to bring out these colors. And yeah, and the leather looks great as well. So basically, it's like a bunch of diamonds on a plastic ring, yeah, like the last one. So, like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment, and more to come soon. I have gotten nothing to do the past next couple weeks, and so I'm basically just trying to cut down this pile of shame as fast as I can. Uh, but my next videos are going to be chaos because I bought that combat patrol box set. So see you soon. Bye